So a bit of thanksgiving and praise for the late, for the life of and witness of Bishop Dr. Cephas Taylor, founding pastor of the Greater Rock Union Baptist Church, and the third vice president of the New Providence District. God had so fit in his ultimate wisdom to take out of this life the, our dear brother Cephas Taylor. We're here to celebrate his life and his legacy. And for all that God has done, thank God for Bishop Taylor as he passed this way. To God be the glory. And we celebrate his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The procession, the battle hymn of the Republic. Procession of ministers, the casket led by Reverend Huda B. Roll, First Assistant Superintendent of the Bahamas Baptist Union and Pastor of Salem Union Baptist Church. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning, they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We live. We live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. But to this end, Christ died and lived again. That he might be the Lord both of the dead and of the living. Job declared, I know that my Redeemer lives. He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world. We're certain that we will carry nothing out. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms.
दस संगत Everybody sing glory, 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 hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's to the glory of God that we live, and it's to the glory of God that we die. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The congregational song standing on the solid rock. Through my disappointment, strife and discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid. Come on, everybody, sing! I'm standing. I'm standing. Taylor said, I'm standing. I am free today. 
Hallelujah. For what the enemy can throw against me. Praise the Lord. I am free today. Yeah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our prayer of invocation, Reverend Philip Ferguson. Let us pray. Our God and our Father who dwells in heaven, we come to you this morning. We are grateful for this gathering. We pray now, O oh Lord, for those who have come to share in the life of Christian celebration for our dearly departed brother and friend. We ask, O oh Lord, that you grant unto them the peace and comfort of mind which can only come from you. We pray, O oh God, this morning that as your word goes forth, we take root in our hearts. We thank you, O oh God, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And ask, O oh Father, that you guide our thoughts and our mind, that we may worship you and do so in spirit and in truth. Lord, in the very beauty of holiness. We realize that there are mixed emotions at this time. But Lord, above all things, we are grateful for the fact that even though we mourn, we can do so as a people with hope. And so we ask that you take us to that level, Lord, where we recognize and realize Lord, that um, you do all things and you do them well. And with this recognition comes the hope that one day we will see your dear brother and friend again. And so I pray as your word go forth that it would convict those who do not know you uh, in pardon of their sins. And Lord, your Holy Spirit would have full control of us on this service. These favors and blessings we do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus.
thy friends despise forsake thee. Somebody say amen today. Hallelujah. That's the prayer. That's our prayer, family, that you would take everything today to Jesus in prayer. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading, Psalms 139, 1 to 14. Reverend Diana Francis, pastor of First Baptist Church. The word of the Lord comes from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 14. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? And whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast, compa compass thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy, are thy works, and thy soul knoweth right well. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen for the word of God. Amen. amen. Come in with a solo, Sherry Munnins, a cousin, followed by a tribute by Jamal Roxbury, a cousin, and a tribute and dance, Antonia Francis, Inaya Kiri, nieces, in that order, please.
your home over there. Jesus promised me a home over Sickness, sorrow, pain, or can he promised me a home over there? me a home over there Jesus promised he promised me a home us a home over there. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jamal Rock. Jamal Roxbury. You see here. All right. Hallelujah. Come on, invite. Antonio Francis and in the area. Inaya Kerry Nieces. 
You can come with your dance, please. Come on, give them a hand. You never lost a battle. Hallelujah. Even though Dr. Taylor is not here, he did not lose. We win when we die in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we now have a recording. Uh, Jamal Roxbury, there's a recording in our studio. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, unto us. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, 
If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you what you ask. Jesus said to Martha, your brother would rise again. Martha said to Jesus, I know, he will rise again in the resurrection. At the last day, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Hebrews chapter 6 and 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which ye have shewn towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister to my family. Today, as we say goodbye to our son, brother, nephew, uncle, cousin, friend, and pastor, as we weep and have questions, remember that God does all things well. We weep, but with hope that we will one day be reunited. My nephew Cephas, when I face time with you on February 5th, and I asked you where you were, and you told me that you were in Cuba to have a procedure done. We spoke in Lent, and I prayed with you. And you said that you would have this procedure on the 7th of February. I FaceTime with you on February at about 8.30 p.m. I did not imagine and I did not know that it was the last time that I would see your face and hear your voice. Oh, how my heart aches. You said that you were okay, but your usual smile was not there. Not knowing that you were getting ready to fold your tent here on this side. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. Fly high with the angel Cephas. I will miss you. This wound that we have sustained by your passing in such a sudden time, it's going to be a long, long healing for us. But we trust God just like you trust God. We will miss you. Your smiles, your humor, your, lo your loud laughter. We will miss you. We will miss your smile your gentleness. Proverbs chapter 19 and 17 says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. We love you, son. We miss you. You have done what you can. In sickness and in health, you trusted and served your God. With and without, you trusted and served your God. Sometimes fallen, sometimes level with the ground. But you trusted your God. Leave him alone. Sleep, Cephas. Sleep, my son. Take your rest. Safe in the arms of Jesus. Love you always, your uncle. Deacon Jose Roxbury, in the master's care, bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Deacon Roxbury, for those kind tribute to the family this morning. A New Testament scripture reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 50 to 58. The Reverend Joseph Roll, second vice president of the New Providence District and pastor of Carmichael Union Baptist Church.
And this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. For when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The word of God for the children of God. Amen. Somebody say amen for the word. Amen. 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 Come in. With as I knew him, Reverend Dr. Joseph Knowles, pastor of Montheos Union Baptist Church, followed by a pantomime by Anthony Francis, nephew. And Taylor, as I knew him. My first encounter with our deceased, the then fellow ambassador for Christ, Cephas N. Taylor, was in the early 1980s. This encounter came through by way of the Bahamas chapter of Royal Ambassadors and marching band. The Earl Francis chapter of the First Baptist Church. Somewhere within this period, I was chosen to become the leader of the above mentioned chapter, in addition to my ongoing evangelistic and mentorship ministries. At this time, across the street from First Baptist Church lived a mother with three sons and a daughter. This mother seems very shy, but showed great strength. Upon my introduction and reason for my visit, without hesitation, she consented that I should take her boys to chapter meeting. This mentorship blossomed from guiding the little boy across Market Street to chapter meetings every Tuesday. Most Tuesday, his excuse not to attend RA was that a member of his family had passed. At one time, he said his little brother, Jacoby, had passed away. While Jacoby was right there looking at both of us through the window. As drilling was a part of our discipline in chapter meetings, Cephas was very awkward in his drilling. As the drill commander led 
the drilling, I would join in to perfect myself in drilling because I, I am both left-hand and right-handed. This results in me being confused in my left and right turn. This Cephas noticed as a little, little boy an attempt to capitalize on my weakness. He was observant, very competitive, and territorial. So he came to me and said, Mr. Consular, I know how to make the right about turn and the left turn. What a challenge. He tried to show me up. I said, OK, very good. I would have you show us next meeting. As he moved up in life, he attended the government high school. One morning, as I showed up as the devotional speaker, at the end of the devotion, he and a few students rushed up on me, and Cephas tried to restrain them. And I said, oh no, don't do that, Cephas. I said to him, you remember the RA pledge? To have a Christ-like concern for all people? He ignored me and said to them, he is my president and he is my counselor. I said, okay now, you all go to your classes and behave. And during lunch, Cephas, share your lunch with your peers, as the Ari Pledge would say. Cephas became very active in the student Christian movement of the government high school. He became very active in our cell group where we spend lots of time in training how to witness and share his salvation experience with others. Bishop Cephas Taylor was an outstanding young Christian man. We share how to spend time in prayer alone with God how to pray in public settings, and oh my Lord, how to understand and how to apply the scriptures. How to build his relationship with God and others, and how to develop Christian deportment. How to cook and eat. My cooking was all right until Cephas' stomach was full. He found, we found a nickname for the then Brother Cephas. His nickname was The Rock. This name did not just derive from the meaning of his name, Cephas. But it was the name given to him by the Lord for his church, even at an early age. The name of his church to date is Greater Rock. Upon this rock, I build my church. Bishop Cephas was a determined and resilient individual. He was the life of the party, whether in a church setting or a social gathering. In addition to Bishop giving his life to the Lord at an early age, his giftedness to preach stood out among his peers. Cephas was a preaching machine. When invited to a church and Cephas decided to accompany me, if I'm asked to share suddenly, I would give way to Cephas as a senior in ministry. This he had a problem with. You're only senior, as Mr. President or Mr. Consular. Not even as a mentor, I said, oh, really? When it's all done, he is looking in my face, laughing from ear to ear. He would say to me, I tell you, don't fool with the rock. I asked, what rock are you talking about? Cephas would always respond, 
rock dock. I'm standing on the solid rock. This is the rock of ages I'm standing on. And he goes on to explain, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In the midst of so many challenges and mistreatment of the young man, Cephas Taylor, with a desire to serve the Lord, Bishop Taylor persevered. God's hand was really upon his life. On the 5th through the 15th of December 2023, I had an appointment to see the ophthalmologist in Cuba. As, I, as my drivers, this appointment have left me stranded. Bishop volunteered to go with me. Right away, this was a challenge for me, knowing his recent hospitalization. I tuned him out to hear what the Lord would say to me. He said, Doc, you ain't answering me. I said, Bishop, I'm listening. At that time, the Lord said to me, yes, take him. I said, okay, Bishop, you can go. That's what I'm talking about. You took so long. Who you think I am? During our stay in hospital, as the Lord has told me, don't ask him anything until you get there the second day. I said to Bishop, Bishop, do you have any money? What type of question is that you asking me, Bishop? I'm, I'm doctor. You ever see me without money? I said, okay, good. The Lord said, while you're here, I must have you to check on yourself. That smart fellow, the second day, he went without me knowing and checked the doctors. My cell phone rang, and the doctor said, Dr. Jose, where are you? And whatever you are doing, come now. I went to that clinic, and this force was going on. And they said to me, your friend is critically ill. We don't understand how he's standing or making a step. I said to Bishop, Bishop, listen. I said, you're going to be okay, you know, but you must take care of yourself. And he was confined to a wheelchair. This was a bittersweet moment of my life, knowing this young chap from a child. To his mother, whom I know for many years, Sister Alberta Carey. His grandmother, in her absence, Mother Sylvia Taylor. Siblings, aunts, uncles, relatives, friends. This morning, I extend to you my condolences. Coupled with the condolences of the Ministerial Council of the Mount Theos Baptist Church, and the countless past and present members of the Bahamas chapter of Royal Ambassadors and other mentees. We all join in saying, may the God of all comfort grant you strength and solace for the journey ahead. The eternal God is your refuge. He knows the way through your wilderness. 
tribute to a fallen ba ba ambassador for Christ, Bishop Cephas and Taylor. We are ambassadors for Christ. As an ambassador, I will do my best to become a well-informed, responsible follower of Christ, to have a Christ-like concern for all people, to learn how the message of Christ is carried around the world, to work with others in sharing Christ, and to keep myself clean and healthy in mind and in body. God bless and strengthen you, family. don't know what I've been through Let me share my story with you All the things that he brought me through My stormy days and my rainy days You don't know all the tears I've cried The things I've kept Bottled up inside Trying My best to be strong Waiting on God And holding on
Amen. Come on, give him a hand one more time. We give God praise. Amen. You just don't know. And when you don't know, you always ought to put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just permit me to take two minutes as we move into our condolences for today. I want to take two minutes so that the, the gentleman that comes behind me don't have to do what I'm going to do. Amen. I want to recognize our superintendent, Reverend Garth Roll. In his absence this morning, who could not be here today due to prior commitment, Reverend Huda Roll, our first assistant superintendent and pastor and our preacher for today. And we have here Reverend Lyndon Clark, a pastor of Palestine Union Baptist Church in Exuma. And then we have Reverend Dr. Wilton McKenzie, pastor of South Beach Union Baptist Church and superintendent emeritus. And also we have our host of other pastors uh, from our union churches, those who have not been on our program. I see Dr. Butler is here, and I see Pastor Elvi all the way from Black Point, Eczema. So you ought to give all of our union pastors a hand for their support of Bishop Taylor and his family here today. Amen. Then from a National Baptist Convention, we have the Reverend Dr. Philip McVie, uh, president of the Bahamas Baptist Missionary and Educational Convention, and, Bish and Bishop Dr. Glenroy Glendon Roll. Amen. Come on, give them a hand. Amen. Such a wonderful job that they did. All that they have done, and Dr. McVie will come, and he will share his condolences with us this morning. Also, we have with us is our uh, Bishop, I see Bishop uh, Lawrence Roll, Prophet Lawrence Roll, the singing prophet. Good to have you here this morning, sir. And then we have the Assistant Commissioner Delavo here this morning. Amen. Amen. And I think I left off one Bishop, uh, Bishop Major. Amen. Bishop Elton Major was responsible for deaning Bishop Cephas Taylor as Bishop. Amen. We attended that particular service, and we say to God be the glory, great things he has done. And so we thank God for all of us here and all of our ministers in the congregation today whose name we are unable to call today. We thank God for all of you being here today in your support for this family. Amen. I want you to put your hands together and give all of our ministerial uh, people, persons here today. Amen. Amen. We thank God. And there's one place now I want to, rec want to recognize is our New Providence District President, Emeritus, Reverend Cedric Farkerson. Amen. Uh, Bishop, Ford, Bishop Taylor was the third Vice President of the New Providence District. Amen. In which Reverend Farkerson led for more than 12 years. Amen. Amen. So come in uh, to bring condolences before us. At this time, in this order, Reverend Alvin Davis, pastor of God's House of Refuge and Love Ministry, Bishop Dr. G. Elton Major, pastor of Metropolitan Baptist Church, Pastor Althea uh, Cunningham, Greater Rock Union Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Wilton McKenzie, Superintendent Emeritus of the Bahamas Baptist Union, and pastor of South Beach Union Baptist Church. And he'll be followed by Reverend Dr. Philip McPhee, president of the Bahamas Baptist Missionary and Edu Educational Convention and pastor of Mount Calvary Baptist Church. They will come in that order. And gentlemen, please know two minutes. And we know two minutes is hard, but we pray that you would so pray that God would so guide your deliberation today as you bring condolences to this family. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath. Let everything that have breath. Now, for those that might not know, Cephas is my cousin. 
Amen. Amen. And so I, I want at least another minute. Amen. Amen. I might as well tell you. Amen. 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 So it was during the mid to late 1990s when I heard that my cousin Gabe Roll had a grandson, his daughter Boitha's boy, who had become a preacher. But it was not until November 2005 when I attended Gabe's funeral at Mount Zion Baptist Church in Baileytown, Bimini, that I had the opportunity to hear my cousin Cephas preach as he gave the eulogy at his grandfather's funeral. He did an excellent job. He did, right? Prompting me to say to myself, okay, my cousin could handle himself. Our paths might have crossed a few times more over the years at funerals as some family members had passed on. Still, it was not until the year 2016 after Pastor Cephas started his own ministry, brought together, he and I brought together by my cousin, Minister Beulah Bean, his aunt. We began to fellowship together, Cephas and I. He invited us down to his anniversaries, and we at God's House of Refuge and Love Ministries reciprocated. In fact, Pastor Cephas would say to me, Doc, because that's what we called each other, your church is in charge of the service. So we would bring our entire church, including musicians, praise team, dancers. We would have a wonderful time in the Lord. The only thing Pastor Cephas did was collect his own offering and gave the word of thanks and the benediction. And when Pastor Cephas would come down to GHO RNL Ministries, in fact, most times when Doc came, he came without invitation. Why? Because he didn't need one. He didn't need one. He was family. And on many occasions, if his service ended early, his church service ended early, and he came to visit, and I was scheduled to preach, preach guess what? I went back on the side, or even my brother, Pastor Martin, we went back on the side and let Pastor Cephas preach. That's how we operated. Now, now, Y'all gave him a couple of, y'all gave him a couple of titles, Reverend Dr. Bishop. But I want you to know that y'all miss a couple. He was also apostle and prophet. And, a, and so Pastor Cephas also operated in the prophetic. Amen? He would often call out someone from the congregation and gave them a word from the Lord to encourage, comfort, and strengthen that, strengthen that individual. Pastor, Pastor Cephas even began to call on my wife, Pastor Charmaine, to speak at his lady's anniversary when he found out that my wife was a three-time cancer survivor and that she had a testimony that could encourage women who were hurting and going through storms themselves, whether it was, it was physical, relational, financial, or spiritual. And that's how he and I lived. When we went to Greater Rock, we were home. And when he came down to God's house of refuge and love ministries, he was home. We lived like families are supposed to live. That's how Pastor Cephas and I lived. And my cousin, Pastor Cephas, was a warrior. I don't know how many times these demons or those demons, that's what he called them, broke into his church and stole his equipment, his microphones, his instruments, mixing board fans, and whatever they could sell. Still, he just kept replacing those items and keeping church. Even when Pastor Cephas, Cephas experienced setbacks and disappointments, he kept pressing on. That's the Pastor Cephas I knew. In closing, I was surprised and saddened to learn of his illness and his passing. And I surely will miss my cousin Doc. So to his mother, Bertha, my cousin, Minister Bueller, my cousin, and the rest of the family and friends and the Baptist community. We will miss him. But if we only prove faithful, I know we will see him again. May Almighty God continue to comfort you as you mourn. Amen? But don't mourn without hope. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. God bless you, and may my cousin's soul rest in peace. Standing on the already established protocol, I talked a lot to the family on yesterday about me and Cephas relationship. Uh, Cephas was my 
rider. We argued a lot. Cephas is miserable, I'm miserable. And so everything about us was an argument. We argued about clothes, we argued about robe, we argued about preaching. And whenever he's losing the argument, he resorts to one statement. You know I hold it anyway, which was only by a couple weeks. He said, I mind turn you and tear your hip up. I said, come on. I said, one thing you always ready to fight. I share one thing with you and then I leave you with a word of encouragement. One day Cephas came to the office and I was on the floor. He said, what you doing down there on the floor? I said, I find myself comfortable here sometime. He said, you sleeping? I said, no, I ain't sleeping. I'm thinking. So he said, I got some lunch for you. Now, when he bring the lunch, he didn't tell me we were sharing the plate. And he leave me with the plate, went to the bathroom. And when he come back, I didn't eat all the ribs, all the ribs off the plate. Because I grew up in Anglison, you know. And your older cousins used to take the meat off your plate so we know to eat the meat first. And leave the rice just in ca case they come. So when Cephas come back from the bathroom, Cephas say, you leave my share. I say, now you tell me you bring me lunch. You didn't tell me we're sharing the lunch. He say, Bishop, you ain't eat all that, you ain't eat all that food. And when you, he say, you eat all the meat and leave, and leave the rice. <laughs> we shared. We loved one another. Lazarus died. Jesus came to Lazarus' tomb. And the Bible says he wept. And I asked the question, why Jesus wept? He was already there and he knew his intention was to bring Lazarus back. Started a little search to find out why Jesus wept. I found in the commentary, which another commentary agree with, that Jesus wept because Lazarus' friend tastes death when death still had his sting. I go to my seat saying to you, family, my tears that flowed from Cephas pass is not because Cephas died under the sting. Because my Jesus has already taken the sting out of death. My tears are tears of memories I will remember of him. And then the loss of him. But we can weep with hope. For Jesus has taken the sting out of death. And if we hang in there just a little while longer. There's going to be a great camp meeting in the promised land. And like I said to them last night, Cephas and Taylor. Let me go over that again. Bishop, Apostle, Doctor, Cephas and Taylor, M-B-B-D-B-C. And I started doing that to him because one day I got up and I said, Bishop Cephas Taylor to the congregation. Cephas said, no, sir, dog, go back and put all my name and I've been. So I fixed his minutes. I said, okay, Cephas. And I had the whole alphabet in the back. He said, Bishop, you was a wicked man. <laughs> but to this family, we weep with hope. For one day, we will see him again on behalf of the CKKI and the family of Metropolitan Baptist Church who all are acquainted with the likes of Apostle Dr. Cephas Taylor. We say to you, our prayers and our heartfelt concerns are with you. We are only a call away. We love you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. On the behalf of Greater Rock, Union Baptist Church, I, Pastor Cunningham, 
give my condolence to the family. He will be truly missed. But one thing will not be missed is we're going to stand on the word. And that was his word. Pastor Sue, stand on the word of God. Upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Again, said, whenever you in town, stop by. By greater rock, where the power of love lies. May God continue to strengthen you and keep you in perfect peace. Amen. We thank our presiding minister for establishing the protocol, but please permit me to recognize the pastor of this church and uh, president of the National Baptist Convention. I stand today to pay tribute to my brother, friend, whom I had an opportunity to share with as the then superintendent of the Bahamas Baptist Union as he established his church, the Greater Rock Union Baptist Church. Energetic. He was focus. He was. He did not just talk, but he was a doer. We thank God for sending him this way. I believe that he's in a better place. He has run the race, he's kept the faith, and now he's gone on to receive his reward. There is not much you can do with two minutes, but I like to be obedient. He came. He served, he gave of himself unselfishly, and I say to God, be the glory. On behalf of our churches of the Bahamas Baptist Union, Long Island, the Exuma, and here in New Providence, we say to you, the family, be strong. Hold on to your fate, and in God's time, we shall meet again. Don't give up your fate. Keep trusting in God. And by and by, till we meet again, till we meet again. God be with you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I said to Reverend Rule, who preside, that you don't have to worry with me because I can't sing. <laughs> to our presiding officer, Reverend Rule, Superintendent Emeritus, to the distinguished pastor of this church, to the executive secretary of our National Baptist Convention, 
to all of our pastors and leaders of our the National Baptist Convention, friends, family members, loved ones. Reverend Rose bent over and said to me that you got three minutes. So I'm blessed to have an extra minute. <clears throat> which I don't think I really need. I want to recognize the staff of the National Baptist Convention who work so hard along with our fallen brother. I want them to stand. I think some of them are here. I want to recognize them for their ability of working with him. Thank you so much for standing with us. <clears throat> to uh, my good friend, Bishop, good to see you. Don't leave without talking to me. Amen. The National Baptist Convention to this family brings our deepest condolences. I was not privy to the great knowledge and friendship of Reverend Cephas until I truly became the president and the Reverend Dr. Glendon Roll came into my office and said to me, I want to present to you a young man who is gifted, talented, sound in his preaching, his commitment to ministry, and his love for Baptists and for people in general. I didn't know him that I could actually answer him and say yes. And I think I said this on Tuesday night that I had to go to ZNS to preach 30 good moments. Reverend Glendon came with me and Reverend Cephas came. And I said, as you well aware that preachers are not gods. Preachers serve God. And sometimes we forget that we're not gods. That we run everything, we're in charge of everything and everybody got to bow to us. We are called to ministry. We don't create ministries. We are called to ministry through the power of Jesus Christ. And so when we went to ZNS, I was not touched to preach. For some time, the burdens of life and the trouble that we as preachers got to go through for other people and other families sometimes drain us physically. That sometimes we just don't feel like preaching. And I said to Reverend Glenn, I said, look, man, I just don't feel preachy today. And I asked him if he would want to preach on 30 good moments. And for some reason, he wasn't too preachy either. But he said, there is a preacher in ZNS studio. 
I don't usually allow preachers to preach any special occasion unless I have heard them before. But the Lord directed me to allow Reverend Cephas to preach. And boy, did he preach. It was during those times that Reverend Glendon and I must give him Reverend Roll, great credit for the great work that the Reverend Dr. Glendon Roll has done to this family. And the great role that he's doing as executive secretary of the National Baptist Convention. Let me tell you, I wish I had more than three, but I think about two and a half now. It takes a special man with unique qualities and love for people and ministry to do what this man is doing. When Reverend Cephas was in Cuba, he called me and said, pack your bundle, we go into Cuba. I said, okay. Dr. Ari Cooper, the Reverend Glendon Roll and myself packed our bag and made our way towards the airport. Then I got a call on my way to the airport that my wife was not doing well. I left a kind of good, but they, by the time I was on my way, my daughter called me and said, Daddy, I don't know if you could go to Cuba because mommy is not doing well. I had my two bags ready to go. I had to turn around and drop me off. Dr. Cooper and Dr. Glendon went to the airport and went to Cuba. We didn't ask anybody to give us anything. We went because we knew that a brother needed our support. And while in Cuba, the executive secretary called and said, man, we need a little bit more money. I said to the controller of our convention, whatever we got, and we didn't have much, but whatever we have, let's use it to help a fallen brother. <laughs> Immediately when he came out of surgery, he called. Dr. Glendon called me and said, he came out talking. He came out looking like the operation went well. I say, thank you, God, because we are praying. But at midnight, some strange things happen at midnight. We later found out that he deteriorated greatly in couple of hours. 
we were all preparing for him to come home. But God had another plan. I want to thank the Reverend Dr. Roll, President of the Union, and this fine pastor for their support, and others who have given, because there are times when we all need help. Thank you, Pastor. For the use of the Salem Church, thank you for the encouragement that you have given to this family. For many of us now in this time of utilizing what God is doing in our nation, forget to know that the same God that puts the brightness in the sun the glow in the moon, the same God puts the twinkling in the stars, the rippling in the waters, same God that makes baby cries and pastors laugh now and then. It's the same God that has welcomed our brother Cephas to a land of pure delight where sin Saints are mortal reign. The same God that's speaking to us right now that if we don't know him to set our house in order is calling us as pastors not as congregation. Brother Hewitt, I'm not worried about congregation no more. I am concerned about pastors who forget at times that we are called to make the world a better place for all of us to live in on behalf of the National Baptist Convention and all of its auxiliaries. We want to give to this wonderful family, this mother who I've grown to love and respect, that the same God will take care of you. Thank you very much, Dr. McPhee, and all of those for your kind words of condolences to this family. The grass with it, the flower fall it, but the word of God stands forever. Amen. It's word time, and I'm going to invite you to kindly stand with me, with the exception of the Reeve family. I welcome Pastor you the role at this time. Please be seated. Let me at this time um, extend my sincerest condolences to the family of the late Bishop Cephas and Taylor. I do so on behalf of our superintendent, Reverend Garth Rule, who could not be here today. And certainly on behalf of all of the 32 churches that make up the Bahamas Baptist Union of Churches. We bless God for all of the pastors and leaders and ministers of the Bahamas Baptist Union, particularly to Pastor Lyndon Clark, who is the second vice president of the Bahamas Baptist Union, and he came all the way from Exuma to be here today. Thank God for you, Pastor Lennon. And then certainly to our president, President Philip McPhee, the Bahamas National 
Baptist Convention's president and the executive secretary and all those who make up the Bahamas Baptist Missionary Convention were here. Our President Emeritus Farquharson, I have to call his name, Bishop Taylor worked with him for 12 years, so thank God for him and for all of the other pastors who are here today. Time is going fast. People just talk plenty and then say the preacher need to say two words and sit down. I don't cut message for people talking. So I came to do what I need to do. Let's preach the word of God. Master, speak thy servant here, waiting for thy precious word. Longing for thy voice that cherish. Master, let it now be heard. I am waiting. Lord, for thee, what hast thou to say? Master, speak thy servant heaven, waiting for thy gracious longing, longing for thy voice that cherish. Master, let it now be One more time, I am listening, Lord, to thee, singing, I am listening, Lord. What hast thou to say to Bishop J. Kyle, good to see you in the back. Thanks for being here today. Job 14, 1 through 14 is where we find our text for the day. And I shall read these verses in your hearing. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Come it forth like a flower and is cut down, he fleed also as a shadow and continueth not. Dost thou open thine ears upon such an one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day, for there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man give it up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dried up, so man lieth down and rises not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. I want to talk to you today on persevering in faith. You would note that 
in this church, if you come here, we do a lot of funerals. And if you've known me for a while and you've come to funerals, you would recognize that I do not preach eulogies at funerals. I think that you do a very good job of telling the story yourself. So when I come, I just come to preach the word, if that's all right. <laughs> One of the great problems we face today is that of waiting. Waiting suggests uncertainty. And uncertainty many times breeds anxiety that in many cases leads to worry. Most of you in this service today would have experienced the anxiety of waiting. Waiting on the results of an exam. Waiting to hear the key turn in the door that your wayward child has arrived home safely. Waiting on the report from the lab that would tell you if the tumor was benign or malignant. Anybody know about waiting? Or sitting in the waiting room while the doctors are performing surgery that is 50-50 that your loved one will survive. I'm talking about waiting. Or finally when the doctor does tell you you have cancer and a stage 4, we could do some stuff to make your loved one comfortable as possible but there's nothing we can do. So we wait on death and sickness and disease comes that debilitates an individual in many instances the toil of the pain and suffering is not only on the individual who is sick but also on the caregivers which is normally family members anybody had to take care of a sick loved one During these times, in addition to family assistance, you personally need to have a persevering faith to hold on and to wait for God. Man, if you don't have God, you're in trouble. In our text today, Job finds himself in a dilemma that got progressively worse. And what made his situation more difficult for Job was that according to scripture, he had lived and served God all his life. Then through no fault of his own, he lost everything that was important to him. He lost his children. He lost his friends. He lost most of his servants. And all of his personal investments, he had spent all his life accumulating. He lost everything in one day could i tell you materials are only temporal those of us who like to build up treasures on this earth could i tell you it could all be lost in one and you don't need to die for that to happen all you need to do is go to doctor's hospital and they'll take all your money in one day To add insult to injury, Job didn't just lose his money, but Job lost his health. His entire body was covered with painful boils. He would be itching and would try to use pottery to scratch the itches, but even that brought on even more discomfort and pain. With no children to help to care for him. And my God, somebody say, My God. My God, then Mr. Job got tired. He told him, you know, Job, it would be better off if you did. Just curse God, he, she said, and die. Get it over with. It would bring relief to you from your condition, and my God will give me some relief. I hope nobody in here like that today. Wishing that your spouse died. Just so you could get a little. Now it's getting rough now. It ain't easy. I ain't trying to really poke at how difficult it is to take care of a sick loved one. Trust me. Caregiving is not easy. And over an extended period of time, people get weary. And then they call the geriatrics for you. 
Because I just can't do this no more. My God, I, I hope some children in and here today, oh my God. Uh, I hope some children in and here today, you know who your parents been doing all they could for you. I wish somebody would help me to preach in here today after they would have saved all their lives for you. And then at the end of the day, you push. Lord have mercy. Some people, could I tell you, you know how we get little class and stuff today and you don't even want to show your friends and your peers who your mother and your father is because they're a shame of what they're doing. But could I tell somebody in here today, if your father and your mother is doing something legal to work and to earn you a living to take care of you, you can't be shame of mommy and daddy. Preach, Pastor. I'm doing my best. But thank God Job had persevering faith. Even after all of his suffering, he, he knew not to give up his only real hope. Anybody know what real hope is? Lord have mercy. Some people have hope in all kind of stuff, but could I tell you the only real hope is you better put that in Jesus Christ. I believe at that wedding day, you know, Mrs. Job said all those words in sickness. Tell you, even when mother and father the forsake, you better know that you better hold on to. Hold on to Jesus because your wife will leave you sometimes. Your husband will walk out on you. You better learn how to put your trust in Jesus. That's your only real hope. Your only real hope. Job said to his wife, Mrs. Job, you speak like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Ah. Then Job does something strange. Instead of having a pity party, instead of having a woe is me moment, the Bible says Job worship. Now some people got fake worship. That's all you could find around here today. They worshiping and jumping up wall and down and you can't tell them, man, they the greatest words until something happened. But could I tell you, Job, in the midst of all he... This is a real worshiper. In the midst of all that he has lost, the Bible says, Job, worship. I could imagine Job getting down on his knees in the midst of all that and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help. I know God. If you withdraw yourself from me, where I gang? Ah, oh, yes. You know, the real, the real Christian could say like Job said, watch this, because we got a funny religion today. We got funny religion today because we preach a pseudo gospel today that everybody is supposed to be blessed right up. Job, if you were spiritual, that wouldn't happen to you. Job, if you was living right, that wouldn't happen to you. And he had three friends to come and tell him that. Man, could you imagine in the midst of all you going through, you get some spiritual person come around you talking about, man, listen, show what you did. What you do wrong. Could I tell you, my brothers and sisters, the real believer will be able to declare like Job as he worshiped him when he said, though he slay me. Yet shall I trust him. I'm talking about salvation, y'all. Anybody who believes that God is a God who will take you through troubles and trials. Oh, you got this God who only is a God of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could hear Job declaring even now. Yes, like the lady sang, the God on the mountain. Is still God in the valley. The God of the day is still God in the night. 
I want somebody in here to bless God that you know when you're going through the valley and the shadow of death, you yet know I will praise him. Ah, oh, yes. That's what the psalmist declared in Psalms 40. You know, if you can't give God a yet praise, man, in spite, could I get somebody in here today to say, in spite of what I'm going through, could I have some, in spite of believers in here today, in spite of what the circumstances look like, man, I'm yet to praise him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's with Somebody bless him. In spite of all that I'm going through, I'm going yet. Sometimes when you're going through crisis, you know, you tend to focus on human condition. Job was in bad shape. Verse 1 of the text he begins to speak of the sinfulness of mankind when he says, man that is born of a woman, but a few days full of trouble, Job says. And the Bible tells us that all of us were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And we inherited our sin nature from our parents, Adam and Eve. And because of our sinful nature, Job says, who can bring what is pure from what is impure? Who could get you saved other than God himself? You can't save yourself. You could never do anything good enough. Could I tell some, because some people believe that they could just do good stuff. And at the end of the day, they can make it in. That ain't going to help you. Because only someone pure could take care of impure human <laughs> Job is saying because of our sin and our sinfulness, we are incapable of being all that God wants us to do because we are caught in this trap of sin and we can't seem to get out. So Job's second complaint was that life was too short. Man, the born of a woman, man, life too short. We are born sinful and then we don't live long enough. Job describes his life as being a few days and full of trouble. Like a fleeting shadow that does not endure. In spite of his sinful condition, he felt that life was too short to do and enjoy all the things he wanted to do. Some people see first died at 46 and we say gone too soon. Jesus left at 33, if I could recall. <laughs> when he was finished, he left. Mm -hmm. It is the quality of what you are doing while you are here. See, some people on this earth, they believe, and could I talk to some people who are just a little older? Well, child, God bless me with long life. And you wicked as the devil, the devil keeping you here. So it can't be that long life means that you live in, right? You're all wicked as the devil and you're here. Tell the Lord, give me long life. Something wrong with that. And all these wicked people living long and see for dead. God, you ain't fair. I'm trying to tell y'all in here that God is sovereign. Y'all know what that means? He does whatever he wants to do. And here's what he does. He says, and don't question me. That's what sovereignty means. Let me give you a little example of what sovereign means, y'all. Some of you parents know what sovereign means, right? When your children ask you to do something, you say no. And they say, why? Oh, Jesus. The answer is, because I said so. And you know, you know the parents telling the children, how dare you question? 
Then some of the old people even use, let me take my glass off. Some of them even use a, 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 what they call old saying. Say, I wake up in here before mustache and beard. You're all too young to know what that is. So even parents try to give their sovereignty over children. What do you think about God? <laughs> so my brothers and their sisters, listen, Job was complaining, but quality of life, Job is better. Some people, man, look here. They all and they wish they was gone. Some of them. And we can all relate to that because there never seems to be enough time. You know, all of us will live as long as we can. And that's fine. All I'm asking you all to do is make sure you're living for Jesus all the time. And stop causing trouble around you. I wonder if anyone can relate to Job. You are already having a difficult time trying to make it. You get sick and you run up a big hospital bill and it seems like it's one nightmare after another. I wonder if anybody been there. Instead of things getting better, they seem to get worse. And the problem with that is you've been serving God all your days and it makes you wonder, does Jesus care? Does Jesus care? Man, if you're, not, if you're not grounded in the word, man, you'll not give up. That was Asaph's problem, you see, in Psalm 73. And you hear him complaining, Reverend Boda, God. God, the wicked prospering. And I'm suffering. He said, it ain't fair. And he was there rambling on with God. But the Bible says one day he had a look into the sanctuary. And when he looked in the sanctuary, he saw the end of the wicked. And I could see Asaph pick up his instrument and he began to dance. He began to praise God. You see, the problem that you have is you have a wrong perspective. You need to get a look into the sanctuary and then you can find out what God doing to you and then you'll give God a praise for it. Job said, I've been serving you. Look what you allowed to happen to me. So frustrated was Job that he welcomed the thought of death. If only you could hide me, he says, in the grave. If only you could conceal me till your anger has passed. If only you would set me a time and then remember me. Then he asks the only question worth asking when life doesn't make sense. If a man dies. Got to be something better than down here. If a man dies, shall he live? Jesus wouldn't answer that question until some 1,500 years later. At the graveside of Lazarus, Jesus answered that question. When Mary and when they came to him and your brother Lazarus shall rise again. I know he can rise again. He said, no. I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me shall never die. That's the answer to the six foot hole that he's going into. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Y'all give God a praise for the resurrection. It does not matter what happens down here. Because one day I'm going to rise. Let me bring this to an end. Job. My brothers is saying that there must be a better existence. Than what's happening here on this earth. 
Sin has us trapped in this temporary existence that is full of trouble. Anybody know we got trouble around here? The deputy commissioner here. Thank God, deputy commissioner, that your phone ain't ringing here. And your little deputy behind you come and say, for the deputy come out. We got to go. Man, listen, thank God, every now and again, man, you know, people like to stay in time, but every now and again, time need to move on. Thank God that January gone. Thank God that February gone. And we praise God for a better match. Go ahead and do that right now. Praise God for a better match. Because could I tell you, it's trouble around here. This is why the apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, if in this life only we have hope, man, we're in trouble. Now, some of y'all don't want to leave here. And you know why you don't want to leave here? Because you put your stake in the ground down here. You got your big mansion down here. You got all the stuff you want to do down here. But could I tell you, my brothers and sisters, down here is just temporary. One day, it can all come to an end. And at the end of the day, my brothers and sisters, we got to choose between down here and up there. If you only got hope down here, you got trouble. If you got plenty of money, I just told you just now. All you need is one, all you need to do is go to the doctor, and the doctor say, "Call your family. We got bad news. You ain't have enough money to pay them. Trust me. You just need one accident, and you gone. One mishap." One child go and do foolishness. All your money gone. And you worrying about down here? Man, could I tell you to wear the world loosely? Wear the world loosely. Start thinking about eternal things. Hmm. Women, you ain't gonna always look the way you look now. You concerned about how you look in the mirror and that's fine. There are some people and there are some religions who don't want women to dress up and to look nice. There are some, some religions like that. And I say, well, I don't believe in that. Honey, some of y'all need it. Fix yourself. Y'all need it. Stay with us, Joe. <laughs> Fix yourself. Don't let nobody come try to tell you what you don't need. Huh, make yourself, yeah, look good. Some of you say, woman, you all need to go get yourself fixed. <laughs> Could I go a little further? Someone tell me go a little further. Could I, that's what got your husband looking at them other women to work. Y'all need to look good for your husband at home. Get that sour face off. That religion that they're trying to teach you, costing you. I'm talking about doing things to keep things cooking at home. And I ain't getting nobody no excuse to go run out and their wife say, Rev, say y'all didn't look good, so run out. The devil is a liar. Stay with your wife. Stay with your wife. Let me wrap up. Though Job's troublesome circumstances cause him to want to give up, he does not wait for God to answer him. It's as if Job caught himself after he asked the question, if man die, will he live again? 
he went, he, he, that kid, something hit him. And he answers his own question. He said, in all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait. <laughs> he said, I just need to wait a little longer until my change come. Appointed time could be translated warfare or hardship. Job is saying that in the midst of my trials, I'm going to wait patiently. I'll be consistent until my change comes. There's something, my brothers and sisters, about learning how to wait. Because when you learn to wait on God, it builds you up. That's why David was able to declare, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Help me preach. Wait, I say. Oh, uh, yeah. Somebody shout, wait. I say, he said, they that upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary and they'll walk and not fade. Could I tell you, you need to learn to? Could I tell somebody who's anxious right now to hold out? You're going through some stuff. Just a little while longer. These heavy burdens, they will soon pass over. Y'all help me in here today. Run the race. Keep the faith. Because in God's own time. Man, bless the Lord right now. Say in God's own time. My change. My change. My change is going to. Job helps us with our ability to be patient during miracle, very difficult trials and tests in Job 19, 25 to 26. He says that when you are going through your trials, your enemy Cephas, Taylor's family, all his friends, all of us, what helps you to withstand in the day of evil is you need to know some things. Knowledge will help you. Watch this. You have to have confidence in God in what you know. So here's what Job says. For I know <laughs> that my Redeemer liveth. Did he guess? And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body. I know. That in my flesh. I'm going to see God. You got to know something. Ah uh, yes. Paul as he's going through his stuff. As he's going through trials and tribulation. Listen to what Paul says. To the Romans, for I know in whom I have believed. Y'all help me here today. And I'm that he is to keep that bit I have against that day. Anybody persuaded in here today that God can handle it for you? Then he comes back in Second Corinthians chapter five, and he says, "For we know that if." Our earthly house of this tabernacle, what is solved? We have a building and I know it. And a house not made with hands, but eternal. And I know that. You got to know these things. John, could you testify a bit for us? We don't listen to Job. And we don't listen to Paul, John, what you got to say. John says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know. Anybody know? That when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him. Bless the Lord in this place if you know him.
Could I tell you there's going to be there's going to be a great change when we get to see Jesus face to face. Someday the silver cord will break. And I know more as now shall sing. But oh, the joy. And I shall wake within the palace of the king. Oh, I don't know about you, but I know this. And I shall see him. And tell the story. Safe. Oh, yes. And I shall see him face to face. And I'll tell the story. Someday, till then, I'll watch and I'll wait. And I got my lamp. All trim. Some of y'all don't know what we're talking about. If you're from the island and you know a little bit about lamp, and you know you got to get the wick, don't me every now and again you got to trim the wick to get the smoke to stop from dirtying up the lampshade. My lips. That when my Savior, I'll greet, my faith will then be changed or turned to sight. Oh, and I shall see him face to face and tell the story saved by grace and I shall see him Face to face. And I'll tell the story. See? Man, if you believe that, just get on your feet and sing that. And I shall see. If you can see him, him face to face. And tell the story. High grace, and I shall see him face to face, and I'll tell the story. Say, bye. Come on, we bless the Lord in this place today. If you're looking forward to that day, hallelujah, you can give God an our praise in this place today. If you know that you are going to see him one day, oh, it's shouting time, not just in heaven, but it's shouting time down here. Bless the name of the Lord. I shall see him. <laughs> oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Pastor Yuda. You may be seated. 
Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I shall see him. What a day that will be. What a day. Oh, when we will all gather around the throne of God. What a day that will be. Come and give God a praise. As we look forward to that day as the preacher preached today. We look forward with great anticipation. We're going to see him again. Amen. Amen. We ask the Berea family to stand as Pastor Gerard Turner pray for the family. before you today God I ask you God to give them the strength as they walk through this valley they need your presence they need your guidance they need your support in the name of Jesus God I say, say a special prayer for his mom right now God that has taken it find it most difficult so, Master, she needs your strength right now in the name of Jesus. She needs your arms, Master. She needs, God, your support in the name of Jesus, Lord. Cause her to understand, God, that the God that she served is able and he's right by your side. Be with her, Lord. I pray, God, even for the support family, God, they would support and strengthen each other as you strengthen them. In the name of Jesus, you are our source, you are our strength. And God, you promise that you will never leave us, neither will you forsake us. And so, Lord, we ask your covering right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the fathers, I pray for the sisters, the, the cousins and the aunts. I pray for them all now. The God of peace that passes all understanding. May it live, rest, rule, and abide in their heart now and forevermore. We give you praise for your strength now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated. Just before we leave the sanctuary, we're going to ask, there's a young man came all the way from the United States, attended ABT Seminary with Bishop Taylor. We're going to give him a couple of words at this time. Amen. Church, amen. Grateful we are for the privilege of being in this place on this morning to mourn the loss of our daily departed brother, to celebrate his life and his legacy, along with his family here in this place. I once served as a professor at American Baptist College, vice president of campus life there in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's always a joy to be at home going celebrations where it can truly be a celebration. As a professor, I always tell my students, uh, if you, live your life well when death knocks at your door every single thing will be all right as a professor i always set my my classes in such a way 
where when we have students who excelled in their academic achievements, that they did not have to take the final exam. In other words, they can leave early because they had fulfilled all the requirements of that course. Cephas fulfilled all the requirements of his life's course and he left early and did not need to stick around. God bless you, family. Know that the man lived his life. He served his God. He finished his course. He ran his race well, and he is now resting with the ancestors and the angels. Come on, put your hands together and thank God for a life well lived. Thank you very much. If we prepare for the recessional hymn, just want to advise the repast will be held at St. John's Native Baptist Church on Meaton Street. We ask now that you all stand the, and before you leave, please, and allow the ministers and the family to exit the church and then you can follow afterwards. Thank you very much for being obedient children of God. Let us all stand as we sing the recessional hymn, Just Over in the Glory Land. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though we were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. 
believe in God, believe also in me. I'm sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I know that my Redeemer lives, that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another. For we brought nothing into this world. It is certain we will carry nothing out. For the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 